Thank you for watching Mass at St. Francis Cabrini Catholic Church in Omaha, Nebraska. Our celebrant is Father Damien Zerline. Welcome, and please join in singing number 302, Gather the People. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. On a summer weekend, welcome as we celebrate this feast of the body and blood of Christ, or Corpus Christi. Years ago, there was always that joke, because we used to, when we gave out communion, say Corpus Christi, Corpus Christi, Corpus Christi, and some would say Houston, Dallas. You know, Why do they say Corpus Christi? <laughs> Prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries we call to mind our sin. Lord Jesus, living bread from heaven, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, cup of salvation, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, source of nourishment and grace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us of our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. Who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger. He then fed you with manna and a food unknown to you and your fathers in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents, and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless is not a participation in the blood of Christ. The bread that we break is it not a participation in the body of Christ. Because the loaf of bread is one, we, the many, are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For, the, for my flesh is true flu, food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats of this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Feast of Corpus Christi, the church gives us that very short reading uh, in the second reading today from the letter to the people in Corinth. Uh, it's really taken quite a bit out of context. There's a couple places in the letter to the Corinthians where Paul talks about the Eucharist. He's really trying to make a point there, but I don't think it would be that obvious if just reading that second reading today. Paul had been in Corinth around the year 50 for about 18 months, establishing a community there. And then he left, hoping that everything would be fine. But it wasn't. Now, the positive thing is, because things went bad in Corinth, we know a lot about what was happening in the early church and how they did Eucharist together. Otherwise, if they hadn't gone wrong, we wouldn't know anything about it. Paul has to write about three years later this very strong letter that he writes uh, first time to the people of Corinth. 
Corinth is a city located between two seas. So it's, it's actually got two ports, one on each side. So it's a very metropolitan city. It'd be like New York or Houston or any place that would get a lot of foreigners living there. So it was a very mixed community. They were wealthy and poor, very urbane. But they're having a, a couple of problems. Do you remember that movie, The Godfather, years ago? Remember one of the final scenes in The Godfather where there's a baptism taking place? Michael Corleone is becoming the Godfather. And so he's being at the ceremony, the Godfather for Connie's child. But he's also becoming the Godfather by murdering the five heads of the other family. The murders take place during the baptism. So they're doing their, do you renounce Satan? <laughs> and all his works. <laughs> so there, there, it's this scene that clearly is evil while the baptism is going on. There's no connection <laughs> between what Michael is professing in his faith to be the godfather at church with his real life. There is this clear division between the two. So that's what's happening in Corinth. <laughs> there is a problem with how they are living and then how they are doing Eucharist. And that's what Paul is trying to address because the people in Corinth are not as bad as Michael Corleone, but it's a similar kind of setting where they are living lives not connected with what they're worshiping when they gather for Eucharist. So this little snippet is from chapter 10 where he's dealing with the problem of idolatry. Now, they don't think it's idolatry. They are simply going to uh, nice barbecues. Because what the people would do, they didn't eat meat all that frequently in Corinth, but when they did eat it, it would be at these parties that were held at temples. And it might be for a wedding, it might be for a birth, it might be for a funeral, it might be Somebody had a special event in their life. So they would gather at the temple and roast a lamb or a goat or a hog or a cow and invite in all their friends. Well, the animal was sacrificed to the God. And then they'd eat it. So it was a great barbecue. And the Christians were saying, you know, it's just dinner. It really isn't idolatry. We're just going there and hanging out with all of our friends that are there. Yeah, we're eating the food, but it's no big deal. Come on, Paul, relax. We're just having a good time, having a pulled pork sandwich, some fries, um, drinking a beer. Come on, Paul, what's, what's wrong with that? And Paul is saying, no, 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 no. Because when you're eating that, you are giving honor to that God. You can't do both. You cannot go to those. You can eat at your house all you want. Nothing wrong. You can have the pulled pork sandwich even. Now, we're going to allow that. But you can't do it if it was offered to the idol. That you cannot do. I think it's a good challenge for us to ask ourselves, all right, do we worship at other altars on occasion? 
the altars of this world where our culture and the world around us offers praise to other things, things that take up a lot of time and energy. Do we do that on occasion? And we might say, I'm not really worshiping power, control, money, esteem. I'm not worshiping those things. I just kind of hang around with them, have a sandwich with them once in a while. Just, you know, it's not really all that bad. No? <laughs> might be. Paul goes on in the next chapter to challenge the people of Corinth about how they're actually doing Eucharist. Because in those days, Eucharist was part of a regular meal, kind of a potluck. So all the families would bring to the biggest of the houses their supper, which in a potluck, <laughs> should be shared, right? You and I go to potlucks, maybe not now during COVID, we can't <laughs> do that, but w during normal potlucks, everybody shares. But what was happening in the community at Corinth when they came together for Eucharist, they all brought their food, but they kept their little part. They'd said, okay, I brought steaks and they brought beans. So they don't get to eat my steaks. I'm going to have the steaks. They can have their beans. So everybody kept their separate food. They did not share. What Paul says is, if you gather as a community and there's not a oneness there, then there's a risk that Jesus isn't there. And that when you do Eucharist, it is not Eucharist. Because as he tells us today, you and I, my friends, are the body of Christ. Not only do we receive the body of Christ, we are to be the body of Christ. We are to act like the body of Christ. We are to have a unity and a love and a service that Jesus has. And if we're not doing that, at least the people of Corinth weren't doing that, then Jesus may not be present. You might be doing all the words. You might be Mike, like Michael Corleone at the baptism. You're saying the words, but the reality is something entirely different. So there's a danger when we don't have a oneness, when we don't have a service, when we don't have a love in our community that expresses the fact that we not only share the body of Christ, but we are the body of Christ. So in our world today that has been dealing with so much division and an awareness of that division the last few weeks, we need to say where are our hearts? Are they in a love and a service and a unity that expresses Jesus? That this is what Jesus would do because this is what we are going to do. Because we are his body here. And the world is hurting, divided with racism and divisions among people and people tearing down one another. It needs healing. And we cannot be part of the tearing down. We cannot be part of the divisions. And if we are, then Paul says, then Jesus isn't here. We can't be Michael Corleone, words only and our lives living somewhat different. Paul says it very strongly to the community in Corinth. And his strong words turn it around. That community survives. And thank goodness it's there so that we can learn 
who we are supposed to be. In my letter today, I, I mentioned what St. Augustine would often say when he was giving out communion. Because instead of saying the body of Christ, he would say, receive what you are. Because you are the body of Christ. When we say yes today, when the deacon or community minister comes to you and says the body of Christ, you are saying yes to being the body of Christ, to letting him transform you, to be that body in a world that so desperately needs it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the Church, that through our sharing in the Eucharist, we may be transformed more and more into the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian unity, that Christ's body and blood given for us may heal all of the divisions within our Christian community and bind us together into one body and love and service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who cannot receive the Eucharist, particularly those in isolation, in refugee centers, or the imprisoned, that God will strengthen them and make God's presence known to them through others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in holy orders, that their lives may manifest God's love to all, and their service to help people experience communion with God and others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Eucharistic ministers, particularly those who minister to the sick and the homebound, that they may grow in faith through their service and be signs of God's love, healing, and presence to others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For governmental and civic leaders, that God will give them wisdom to address the unrest, insight into writing the injustices and words that will unite society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and those who care for them, that God will send healing to the sick, strength and wisdom to those who care for them, and inspiration to those researching treatments and vaccines, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Joe Vendetti, that they may be resting in the arms of our loving Savior forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son and for the body and blood he shares with us today. May we be filled with your Spirit until we meet in your kingdom, where you live and reign.
forever and ever. Amen. As we present our gifts, please join in singing number three. During our offering, please prayerfully consider making a donation to St. Francis Cabrini Catholic Parish. These donations help pay our small yet mighty staff and help pay our bills. We understand these are uncertain times for all of us, not knowing what the future will bring. But let us continue to trust that God will always provide. Donations can be made online at stcabriniomaha.org. That's stcabriniomaha.org or mail your donation to the church office at St. Francis Cabrini Catholic Church, 1248 South 10th Street, 68108. I've poured out a love today, unites all in. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant your church, Lord, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings that we present here through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ. For at that last supper, gathered with his disciples, establishing for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross. He offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race bounded in one world may be enlightened by one faith and united in one bond of love. And so we approach this table, this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to heavenly realities. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, without end, as we acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And it's
offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, so I, I think, think normally the, uh, Santa, Santa Lucia, Lucia would, would be happening around this time, um, and of course that's not happening. <laughs> but there are conversations going on with the Santa Lucia leadership to do at least some spiritual uh, gathering uh, in honor of St. Lucy toward later in the summer. So we'll let you know when that would happen. This is also the time of year when College World Series would be starting. So. If you want to bring bats and gloves next week to Mass, we could maybe, um, or a hat, or, or maybe you could just send a little note to your favorite team and say we miss you, because we normally would have those folks here as well. <laughs> but anyway, we continue. Thank you for being here, uh, for joining us in our celebration of Corpus Christi. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in number 616, We Are Called. for watching Mass at St. Francis Cabrini Catholic Church in Omaha, Nebraska. Please share this experience with friends and family. You can make donations and get updates about the parish on our website at stcabriniomaha.org. Mm -hmm.